Welcome to the Florida Education Association's first ever virtual rally. I'm Andy Ford, president of the Florida Education Association, and I want to thank you for being part of this very important event. We're not alone in this online adventure. Education supporters from around the state are logging on right now to join us in cyberspace. Our virtual rally is the kickoff to our big push to get as many people as possible to jump behind our message, take action, and contact their lawmakers to tell them to keep the promise, to make our schools a priority. Today in Tallahassee, legislators heard from parents, teachers, students, and community leaders, all calling for smaller class sizes, support for our teachers and education support professionals, and adequate school funding. Let's go to today's rally at the state capitol. And the enthusiasm is growing here at the Capitol as people prepare to head home and follow up with their legislators. Many people say they are extremely concerned about some of the legislation that has appeared this session. They say it will hurt public education. And that's the very reason to head home and stay in contact with their legislator. Actually, that's where you, the voter, have the greatest power. There is anger frustration and confusion. They want to gut the system. They want to make it a rent-a-teacher, basically. That's what they basically want to do. They want to get rid of the old, the, the, the veterans, and make it a rent-a-teacher state. And most of all, lots of questions. Why don't we have a permanent revenue source for public education? Why did the commissioner put $353 million into the final phase of class size reduction that was state board approved, but it's not in the Senate budget nor the House. Where's the money? Parents, teachers, and administrators say Florida legislators get a vote of no confidence in the way they've been handling public education. I think they read a lot, but I don't think they understand the day to day and how hard our teachers are working in the classroom to help our children. So no, I don't think they really understand. I think they're looking at numbers. Thousands of Floridians gathered in Tallahassee to paint the real picture of what they see happening in their schools. Many question what's really behind reform legislation such as Senate Bill 6, a bill its sponsor, Senator John Thrasher, calls the hammer, saying it's needed to force teachers into annual contracts and merit pay. Parents and teachers say schools are making academic gains, as noted by the state itself. They ask, how will making it easier to fire teachers and tying pay to test scores help students and encourage better teachers? It's the worst, worst bill that they could ever pass up here. It's, it's more or less like they're punishing the teachers for doing a great job. Kill the bill! The legislative proposals are massive, from totally backing off the smaller classes to an attack on teacher quality, including performance, compensation, and contracts. There's an overwhelming expansion of publicly funded vouchers, more testing, and more cuts to local school funding. There's even a potential raid on public employee retirement. Legislators are on the fast track pushing their reform agenda with little input from parents and teachers, a concern that some say could hurt everyone. If you look to your right, to your left, behind you, you see a sea of advocate groups standing together, willing to fight. And it is a powerful picture from up here. Now the focus shifts to the House, which released its companion bill, and it's very similar to SB6. Before hitting the streets, these participants walked the halls in the building behind me, meeting individually with legislators to make their case for public education. Next election day, we definitely have to watch how people are voting and um, see how we feel about that and, and vote our conscience, and we will. I'm feeling that this should not stop at, at, um, at today. I'm definitely adamant about the fact that we need to continue to make sure that our legislators know that we have to vote for them come November and they need to be paying attention to the teachers because they need our votes.
and our momentum continues to build. Together, we've been working to get our message out on as many fronts as possible. We want legislators to know we're serious when we tell them to keep the promise to make our schools a priority. We are fighting back against poorly written legislation that attacks our teachers, slashes school funding, cuts our retirement benefits, and turns back the clock on small class sizes. We've been hammering this message home in print, on billboards, and TV. In fact, you might have seen news coverage from our press conference. Here are a few highlights from that event. Teachers are going to do what teachers do. We're going to make up the difference. We're going to use our private time. We're going to use stick our hands in our pockets the way we always do. And we're going to try to hit the target as it moves constantly and hit those benchmarks. Because we do know what's, we know what's best for children. And if you ask us, we know. The teachers know. The administrators know. The principals know. We know how to reach our children. If Florida would like to thank her teachers, here are some things that they can do that can be quantified for us. They can give us more planning time so we can teach the lessons their students deserve and give us fewer students so we can give them the individual attention they need. And they can pay us for our experience, our skills, and our education that we bring to our classrooms every day. I said to the Senators of Florida, don't punish us with Senate Bill 6. We've also been spreading our message via web videos. According to the dictionary, the definition of promise is an assurance that one will do something. Simple, right? Kids make them. Parents, teachers, cafeteria workers, school secretaries, bus drivers, and legislators. Plus, we've hit the airwaves to make sure everyone in the state knows what our lawmakers are up to. The more support we have behind us, the better. If your child is a student in Florida public schools, brace yourself, because Florida politicians are doing real damage. Now it's your turn to take action. You've already proved you're motivated by joining our virtual rally. Now take the next step. Following this video, take a moment to send a message to your legislator. Sign the petition. Print out and post a Keep the Promise poster. Put it in your front window at home, in your car, or workplace. And don't forget to spread the word to at least three people. We want as many people as possible to contact their legislators. We call it our big push. Let's fill lawmakers' inboxes and voicemails with our messages of support for Florida schools. You know, I have three kids in the public schools, and Florida legislators need to hear from the teachers and ESPs working in our public schools in order to better understand the impact of current education policy on teaching and learning. We need to work together to make sure that our schools are actually a priority and we need to keep the promise to students and teachers. Please make sure to contact your legislator. Visit us in Tallahassee, call on the phone, write a letter, get in our face, or send your legislator an email. But stay involved because schools are too important to neglect and you know that better than anyone. I'm sure my colleagues would agree that if you want to make a difference in education policy, then it's important to talk with your legislators. Education policy starts here in Tallahassee, and you can play a role in shaping it. I encourage you to tell everyone you know about the education issues facing our state. Tell your lawmakers that Senate Bill 6 is a bad idea. Tell them not to retreat on class size. Tell them not to cut retirement benefits and urge them to fund education now. Together, we can make a difference. Tell your legislators to keep the promise to make our schools a priority.